Welcome to Monday Jazz and Conversation, presented by a collaboration of four nonprofit organizations Gold Coast Jazz Society, South Florida Jazz, Sunshine Jazz Organization, and the Miami Jazz Cooperative, all of whom are dedicated to bringing jazz to South Florida audiences. Each Monday, Wendy Peterson and Nick Yorta feature the music and talk to the country's most talented and interesting jazz musicians. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome John Fedchok to the uh, hang. Hi, everybody. Hi, Great to be here. Um, the amazing and beautiful and the world's best person, Brenda <laughs> Alford. <laughs> Ooh, hi, Brenda. Live up to that. <laughs> okay, I got some seven to do. <laughs> please welcome to Jazz and Conversation, the amazing Joe Donato. Joey D! Hello. How are you? I'm so Good evening, sad ladies and that gentlemen. This is stressed. Ralph Edwards. And tonight, tonight, <laughs> it's Joe Donato. This is your life. And now, the hosts of Monday Jazz and Conversation, Wendy Peterson and Mickey Orta. Hello, hello, hello. We're gonna... Uh, here we are. <laughs> Woo! You know, try... I've got to, I've got to, I've got to wipe his brow because he's just, he's working too hard tonight. Trying to improve a show is hard work. It's hard work. Yeah, we, we, every, every week we try to make the sound better. We try to make the video better, and everything that we time we think we have it down, we show up and nothing works like the way it's planned. It's I know. Just the way it is. And, so. And the beauty of it is, I have notes. I have notes. I take notes. He's li he's a list he's a list guy. Uh, Never works. But we. The beauty of this is that the show is only going to get better, always. Maybe. <laughs> I think maybe we should just leave well enough alone. Maybe that's the key. Mm, is that what it is? Anyway, the exciting thing is it's the beginning of March, uh, March Madness, and we, we're going to start with the maddest of all men tonight because uh, we have quite the show. I'm very excited to learn uh, more about his history and his story. You see what I did there? Oh, that did you was like clever. that? Yeah, okay. That was good. Uh, Sammy Figuero Figueroa, who is just an amazing musician, an amazing guy, uh, and he's fascinating, and he's done so many cool and amazing things, and we're going to learn all about it, hopefully. And uh, hopefully this all works. We're uh, feverishly keeping our fingers yeah. crossed. If anything happens and you don't hear sound or don't see uh, an image, you're out there watching. Just write to us. Let us know. Yeah, send a, <laughs> send a comment in, please. Because uh, we're that's generally how we figure out things aren't working is when you let us know. Um, other than that, I th I would well I, I think we should talk about the oh. special trio that Sammy has going today, and I think we need to get in. Very very that. good. All right, so not only do we have Sammy Figueroa live at the Jazzport, but we have two stellar guys right alongside him. We've got the one and only Martin Bejarano on piano, who we had a whole show about a while ago, which was really cool and exciting and fun. And on bass, we have the one and only Carlo De Rosa. So uh, it's really a kind of a treat for all of us to hear live jazz. Yeah, yeah. And uh, with, with that being said, we're going to get out of here and uh, uh, send it on over to the Sammy, Sammy Figueroa Figu Trio. There you go. You are on. No. Nope. <laughs> ah. Now we're on. I, I can't see you because of the uh, suntan. It's working out. But uh, it's working thank you for coming. It's working now. All oh, right. Well, thank you for coming. This is the first time I do something like this. This is very unusual. And uh, <laughs> and and but very fascinating. It's interesting what COVID can do. It'll transform you into another metamorphical being. And, uh, and I'm all for it. I like nature and I, I'll go through the process. I think we all are. I'm very happy to be here. And uh, we formed this little trio without a drummer so we can play some cool tunes, very soft, very cool. I hope you like it. Let's start the show. I'm not gonna talk anymore. Here we go. We're gonna do a tune now uh, that was written by Michel Camilo, uh, the great pianist composer. He wrote this song and dedicated it to me, which is kind of weird because, you know, when you dedicate a song to somebody, you're usually dead. But, uh, but I'm very much alive, and I'm, I'm honored that he wrote this for me and uh, when he did. And this is uh, a song that he wrote called, And Sammy Walked In. Here we go. One, two, three. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you so much. Like Wendy said, how about it for the incredibly talented, I'm so proud of this gentleman, Mr. Martin Bejerano in the piano. And on bass, the amazing and talented Mr. Carlos de Rosa. We're going to do another cool tune from our repertoire. We're going to do a ballad now that uh, <laughs> we're going to do a ballad now that uh, it was written by a Puerto Rican composer, Mr. Rafael Hernandez. 
And uh, the reason we're doing this, because my father used to sing this song. He was a he was a balladeer singer in New York and Puerto Rico. He was very well known, and he did many albums. And uh, and this is one of the tunes that my father did. It's called El Último Suspiro.
Thank you so much. Thank you. A beautiful ballad, El Ultimo Suspiro, The Last Breath. Hey, I want to thank, uh, I mean, a person who is so special, who actually is responsible for me being here and all of us, Rick Katz, who has put this together, and he's been doing music for 11 years every Monday night. He's incredible. Talk about a music lover and loyalty to jazz. Thank you, Rick, and all of you for having us here and, uh, and for your continuation of this wonderful process of giving music to people all the time. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. We're going to do a song now by uh, Cedar Walton. This is a classic, Firm Roots.
<laughs> Thank you so much. We are going to take a tiny break, and we'll be back with some more music for you. So stay with us. We're going to do a little talking with uh, Wendy and Nikki, the two most beautiful. It couldn't happen to two more beautiful people <laughs> that they're doing this than Nikki, who's one of the greatest bass players in the world, and Wendy Peterson, one of the great singers of all time. <laughs> so uh, I love you both. Let's do it. I love it. So all right, so I'm, Nikki's going to get a oh look. It says I'm Sammy, which is hysterical. But Nikki's going to get uh, Sammy ready for his interview and so we can hear him and ask him questions and show some things. But in the meantime, what I really want to do is I want to, uh, I want to shill for them because it's so important that we, that we are able to keep this, this music going um, and continue our, our kind of habit of having Monday Night Music live. That, that's what we really, when we started this almost a year ago, which seems crazy that this pandemic is now going into, the, into a year, but um, <clears throat> almost a year ago, that was so important to us. We had been presenting music every Monday night for years, and we didn't want to get out of the habit. We didn't want our community to get out of the habit. So this is how we are trying to you know, keep the music going. And, uh, and you know, all these guys have not had real gigs for a really long time. So uh, what we're trying to do is, is do our little, little teeny tiny part of keeping, uh, you know, working musicians working. So if you would please help support our musicians if you can, it really does mean the world to all of us. Um, we want to, it's really easy. All you have to do is text the word tip jar, T-I-P-J-A-R, uh, to the number 44321. And, and, and it's really easy. You text it. The, the number 44321 is, is where you're sending it. And the message that you're sending is the word tip jar. You immediately get a, a message back with a secure link to be able to, uh, to you know, to, to, uh, to pay however you want on PayPal or, or, um, or credit, using a credit card. Uh, it couldn't be easier, and I promise you it's safe because I, I, half the times I'm in here doing it also, uh, you know, showing the love to our musicians. So uh, we really appreciate that. And the first $100 will be matched. So we want to send these guys home tonight. And all of the, that's the important thing, too. All of the money, 100% of the money down to the penny goes directly at the end of the night to the musicians. We don't take anything. We don't, you know, we no, no fooling around, okay? No fooling around. <laughs> I promise. So uh, you can feel good knowing that all of it's going, you know, directly to the musicians. And it's really important that, that, that we're able to do this. And, and it feels like a gig. It is a gig. It's a real gig. We've got a, a little teeny tiny little audience just so they can feel the energy. And, uh, and they're working their hearts out. So uh, without uh, any more jibber jabber, well, we're gonna jibber jabber, but we're going to uh, talk to Sammy about his incredible life and history. So are you there? Sammy. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> hi. How are you? I'm wonderful, good L to see you guys. Yeah, listen, I can't <laughs> tell you how much I love you. Oh my God, you're gonna make me cringe now and I'm a, <laughs> I'm like a prune. I cringe very easy. <laughs> you're like an old softy. Is that what you're yeah, trying to I'm say? Yeah, an old softy. Yeah. Uh, you are so fascinating to me because, you know, I've known you for the longest time. And just recently, when somebody else mentioned it on the show, uh, did I know that your father was a very famous singer? Yes, he was a... Uh, he was just getting ready to take off like a rocket. He was young, you know, and uh, he took off very fast. I... I honestly didn't meet him because I was really small at the time. I was about seven years old, so I didn't, I didn't get to meet him because he was too busy in the clubs. He was a real bohemian. Okay. You know, he believed in the cigarette and the drinking and the hanging, and uh, and uh, he died when he was thirty-five years old. Oh my God! You know, so I didn't get to meet him, but I heard a lot of stories about him through uh, famous people like Tito Puente, Tito Rodriguez, who told me they were very good friends of his and. Uh, and then I got to hear him, of course, his records, and his grand, his his parents raised me, so uh, that's how the whole thing started. Wow, uh, and, and so is that? I I know you do. You happen to love singers, so is I that love singers. is that why why you think you love them so much? Just because it's kind of part of your history, or you know, I don't. I, I it's probably in my DNA. The the fact that because 
you know, I didn't grow up around him, but I knew that I had an affinity for singers. I, singers were were meant so much to me because I like the poetry, I like the feeling, I like the emotion. Uh, every singer expressed himself in a whole different way, which right. is a wonderful thing, and and they all had something to say, you know. Did uh, do you sing at all? I was a singer. I started off as a singer in Puerto Rico. I was a salsa singer for Bobby Valentin. Oh wow! Okay, and Rachel wants to make sure you say your father's name, so people can actually go look look him up, right? I mean, it would absolutely, he, Charlie Figueroa. Charlie right. Figueroa. Yes. And and he's you, all over YouTube. So. Okay, so there you yeah. go. That'll be so fun to to check out. <laughs> Did uh, so somebody also asked me to ask you about the the story behind your first name? <laughs> oh my! Oh God! <laughs> I uh, you know, it's funny. Sammy that name is, is just pretty like outrageous. A, yeah. Well. You know what happened was that when I was born, the the doctor who brought me into into the world, lo I don't know why he had such an affinity for me, but he asked my mother if he could adopt me, and my mother said absolutely not. You know? <laughs> he should have come back at like age twelve right. or something. You he know? was a he was a Hasidic Jew, you know, and he said, "Well, let me let me name your son the <laughs> Mordecai, Mordecai," you know. Mordecai was the friend of Jesus, just blah, 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 blah. And, uh, and so I said, okay, you can't adopt my son, but I'll, I'll put your name on it. And so Mordecai is Mardecao in Spanish. So uh, okay. I mean, no, nobody, nobody calls me that. It's too hard to pronounce. So Sammy is like more. Uh, and by the way, Sammy came from a couple of kids around my block who did not want to call me that name. And they said, now you're Sammy. And Sammy spread from one block to the other. And in a month, the whole town <laughs> oh, called me hysterical. Sammy. So I stayed Sammy. That's amazing. <laughs> Are we tempted to call him Mordecai tonight? <laughs> no, no, please. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We, we are tempted, but. <laughs> and so, and so uh, when did you start playing? I, I didn't start playing percussion until I was 19. I was, I was singing in Puerto Rico. I had a, a great gig singing with a couple of famous bands. Papo Luca, who's a very famous pianist in Puerto Rico, La Sonora Matancera. Sure. Yeah. And uh, I was singing with him, and uh, I was singing with Bobby Valentin. And I was really a salsa singer that, that had an affinity for jazz and, and all that. And sort of, I heard one guy, Cal Jader, back in the early 60s, I heard this one album called Sona Libre, and I heard this conga solo, and I flipped out. And it, it was actually an American guy. His name was Bill Fitch. He oh. graduated from Berkeley, and he was a piano player and percussionist. And he was an amazing. So he was the one that got me out of singing that actually inspired me to be what I am now. Wow. And Bill and, Fitch. And you don't ever think about, you know, coming up front and, you know, singing a song every once in a while on, during well, the show? Or? I, I did sing a song in my, my first record, and Sammy walked in at the end of the... Uh, of the album, the number 10, it's a song that I wrote for my cat. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, we, I love cats we, so much, I actually happy, wrote yeah. a... We had, uh, who was Othello. it? It was Othello wrote, wrote a song for his dog. So, no, a, a goat. A goat. A goat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a cat lover. I pick cats all over the place. Okay. Oh, I okay. save cats. See, I love cats. Now, just uh, for people that don't know the, the scope of your career... You know, the huge we, breadth. Yes, because you're, you know, you're one of us, and you've been around town, and w everybody knows the Latin jazz, you know, explosion and all the things that you've done. But how many albums would you say you've been on? It's got to be over four hundred. Wow. Uh, I, you know, I really lost count because you know when you're young, you take everything for granted. You know how, you know, you think it's going to last forever. Right. You know, and I was just at the right time at the right place. I was in New York at the time where everybody lived there, from Chick Corea to Herbie Hancock, right. Chaka Khan, Diana Ross. They all lived in Manhattan. So while salsa was going on, I didn't play salsa. I was playing rock and roll and, and R&B and stuff like that in Brazilian music. So I was one of the few uh, percussionists that was doing that kind of diverse styles. Right. You know? There was a couple of people like Ralph McDonald and, uh, and there, there was... a uh, Crusher Bennett and a couple of other people, but there was always room for somebody new, and and everybody had a lot of love for each other. We all respected each other. It was a yeah. it was a beautiful thing happening in New York at that time. 
Well, I want to I want to uh, just bring into the stream uh, your discography from your website, uh, just so they could see some of these names. So. Yeah, you know, Mariah Carey and David <laughs> Bowie and Chaka Khan and Sheik, the Brecker brothers Miles and Whit Davis. Whitney Houston. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, from, from Miles Davis to Whitney Houston to Herbie Mann to the... To Yoko Ono, for crying out loud. Gosh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, who can say they've recorded with Yoko Ono? Ashford, oh, yeah. can. Ashford that, and Simpson and, oh, yeah, God. Benny King and Billy Squire and, yeah, Bette Midler and, yeah, amazing. Carl Anderson, Carly Simon. It's, it's crazy. You've been on, you know... You, you all have heard Sammy uh, in your home. You just don't know it. Right, that's true. That's one of those things. Yeah. I was very lucky. I was very yeah. fortunate. And I tell you, I'm very blessed. I, believe me, I don't take any of that for granted. Uh, I'm very, uh, it was a blessing that that happened to me. And, uh, and I'm just glad I'm still here that I could able to keep up, you know, a little bit. Sure, know? sure. And uh, you told me uh, earlier that you're, getting ready to start on a new project yes I, i'm working on a on a new project with uh, john diversa nice uh, which he he won last year three grammy awards you know and uh, i love him he's such a consummate uh, musician sure and and such an amazing composer and conductor he's a prolific artist in itself and and also he's one of the most kindest and beautiful souls i i've met in a long time kind of like you nick you're the same you have that same that same <laughs> embellishment of beauty man. you guys I, and i have to tell you i'm not just like <laughs> i don't want to just toot your horn but it was you and your brother mike orta that we used to play together yes and i couldn't have played with two guys that were not only prolific in their in their instrument but you were also genuinely honest f forthright humble it doesn't get any better than that i'm just the lucky guy that i was surrounded by goodness well, and you guys were my saviors pl and, playing and, with you, know. you has always and, and knowing you has always been a pleasure and i i want to actually mention that you know yesterday was michael's uh, birthday oh my and God. and i i think it's very interesting that really one of the last gigs that he played before you know started getting more and more ill was uh with you and and your band at um the arts garage mm. and oh here's a picture God. of that that's right and i remember he was having problems with his hands but he then he sat at the piano he did his hand in and he took out your charts and he worked them out and he sounded so ridiculously good that night it was one of those things like wait a minute you've got this problem and this issue and you still are kicking my butt i don't like that <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah yeah i mean we we thank you for for giving us the opportunity oh god i mean it, that was i had so much fun doing that gig with you guys right you know and and you know getting back to the first question that you you said about the project yeah well w john and i decided to do a uh, a sort of a sammy john project which is a big band thing but what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do some urban soul and some neo soul uh, oh. with a big band. Very cool. And, 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 and incorporate the percussion with that big band thing and, and do, because I never, I still haven't heard uh, a big band do that kind of D'Angelo type of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And okay. so, you know, I, 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 I was born in the hood. I mean, I grew <laughs> up in the hood. Mm -hmm. You know, I lived in Harlem uh, for many years and, uh, and I grew up where there was a lot of church music, you know, and uh, and so he's excited about it because he said, yeah, I want to experiment with that and see what happens. So nice. well, that seems like the perfect project for you to do some singing. That's yeah. true. Yeah. I mean, you know, he asked me if, if I wanted to do, uh, you know, we're going to try it out because, I, you know, I, I'm out of practice. And uh, <laughs> and, you know, the voice is, is, is something that yeah. that needs to be, you know, el elasticated, you know. Sure. I know yeah. a I know a, a fairly okay singing teacher. If you, <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll slip you her number later. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? If we're going to toot our own horns, I got to say I've been thinking about uh, Rick Katz talking about you and changing the intro to have it say Grammy nominee Nikki Orta because I I have the pleasure of saying that Sammy's first album, well your first two albums, but the one yeah. that I was on which was uh, the Latin Jazz Explosion, right. was actually nominated for uh, a Grammy Award. Yeah, and and Sammy, Sammy was gracious in. enough to 
list the whole band as, as oh, that's members. So, that's and amazing. so that's I have great. this sitting at my house, which is a lovely you know, medal <laughs> and my paper. So I'm just, not that I want to raise, not that I want my no, name. No, but that to is be. such a beautiful thing. Yes. It is. So, so that was one of the, the kind of cool things that, that but, but the reality is, you. is he, he does wear that medal around the, around the house I do. sometimes. <laughs> You know, I always take a peek at it. It's in my drawer. Yeah. And once in a while, I go, let me see if it's still there. Yeah. You know, I keep on thinking it's, it's a an illusion. Yeah. It's a beauty. It's, uh, <laughs> and I have that, this little pouch, you know. Where yeah, they, exactly. They, yeah, I got that. And yeah. you know what I do? I smell it. And I go, okay, it goes back. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I actually oh, smell this, it. The I, smell of, of, of success. success. That's yeah. what it of is. Exactly. Grammy medal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm going to bring some pictures oh, on and, and you can talk because here's just a handful of people that you played with. But this gentleman just passed away recently. One of the greats. Yeah. Oh, the great Chick chick. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We did an album together called Miles Espanol, dedicated to Miles Davis. Mm. So I got to really hang out with him and and talk to him and he was such a humble kind human being but also you know he was a genius you know yep. he he probably broke every barrier known to man in terms of the whole conceptual aspect of music mm. you know yeah he was like the real true genius who never stopped exploring and and the only way you could do that is to be a child in your heart that's, that's true right. because if you're not yeah. a child in your heart then uh, you'll never move along the way and he was a, a kid at heart yeah so it's that's like what that made fear, it special. Like you see, kid, not not all kids, but there's you know th those kids that are just fearless. They have absolutely no fear of failure, of falling, of of anything. And that's, that's kind right. of you know, in order to be like a genius like that, you really just can't be afraid to try whatever. Exactly. You know, it, it might fail, but you know, hey, it's a, it's, it's a fun you know, it's fun on the way down. You know. <laughs> yeah. He, don't we know? Uh, don't we no, all? Just... You know, Chick told me, Sammy, it doesn't matter what age you are mm. you know it doesn't really matter as long as you're young in your heart it's you're going to continue yeah and yeah. he was a great inspiration to me and pl as plus when i first heard him uh, he was playing latin music with willie bubble in the early 60s wow, yeah. you know right. and and with mongo santa maria yeah he's one of the first to explore blue mitchell genre, and i mean yeah. how, how, this guy was amazing yeah you know and he was you know his father was from calabria you know from from real deep italy yeah wow you know and his mother was Italian and grew up in Boston, you know. Yeah. Great, great musician. Oh, yeah. He uh, was he was one of my favorites. So I'm going to go back. I'm definitely not doing this chronologically because we have this pick here. Oh, my. Oh, Lord. Oh, Where's yeah. Sammy? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, man. I look like a flying <laughs> ant. <laughs> <laughs> so so what was this group? That was Raices. That was the first album I ever did in my life when I was a kid. And that was a group that we put together uh, in the early 70s. And we were inspired by Ayrton Moreira sure. and Return to Forever. Ra oh, okay. okay. And so we did a different type of group. We did Brazilian with funk, you know. And so this album came out on Atlantic Records. We were signed to Atlantic. And uh, we went to New York and moved to New York. And then when we did the first <coughs> album, the first gig we did is open for Miles Davis. Wow. At the Schaefer Jazz Festival in New York City. Sweet. That's amazing. What a way to start your yeah. career. <laughs> it can yeah. only go down from there. Right. No, I mean. No. <laughs> <laughs> I said, how do we get here? How do, how did, do I get this gig? Did how I, the hell does one get a gig I, like this? The, the question I have for you, though, is, can you know, is this something that, is this around? Could, could somebody find this? Yes, yes. Uh, the record. You could find if you go to if you go to YouTube, the record is right there. Oh wow! And uh, it became a collector's item, you know, for a while. But now, Atlantic is is actually putting it out. And, oh! And say the uh, name one more time. The group's name. Raices, Raices. which means okay, roots. Yeah. 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 Okay. Very, nice. Very, very nice. cool. And. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, there we go. I, oh, I recognize some of these people. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we got my Paquito God. and Will Lee. Will Lee. Oh, was right. Will hanging? Because I see Stengnauer, I'm sure, was, was playing on the, on the game. Or were, you were probably playing with Will. Yes. Uh, yeah. we, we did a gig in New York City at, uh, at Dizzy's place in New York, and uh, we were having a ball. Mm. <laughs> it, it, it's easy with Paquito. And Will, you all know Will. Will's, a, oh, yeah. 
was talking to him the other day. He's, he's a sweetheart and great bass player and a funny guy. Oh, my God. He's a joke every second. Right? You know? Yeah, I know somebody like that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, speaking of people that, that were young at heart. Oh, my. Oh, Lord. Mr. Candido Camaro. Was he an influence on you? Oh, yeah, very much, very much. I mean, he was like my father, you know, and we were always in touch. Boy, you know, I want to be like that. He was right. 90, 99. Talk about a guy. That guy could, you know, not walk. He could, you know, they'd have to wheel him or, you know, pick him up, sit him on his stool, and then he starts playing. Yeah, that's yeah. right. You know, and he could never nuts. speak. He could never speak English. Even uh, the 70 years he was in New York, he he never spoke, you know, hey, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. Know, he, he always had that accent, you know. Sorry, how are you? And I didn't, I didn't understand what he was saying. <laughs> That's oh very gosh. funny. <laughs> Only when he played did you understand. No, he he spoke with his hands. That's right. Yeah. Well, and he, and here you are with Kurt. You were gigging with him as well. Yeah, I uh, Kurt. <laughs> Kurt and I know each other for a long time. You know, when he was in Chicago, starting. You know, and uh, we always stayed in touch. And I saw him rise above to the fame and all that. But he deserves it. He's a very educated uh, gentleman, and yeah. and he's a poet. He's a composer. Philosopher. Uh, he's yeah. an educator. He's just a, a brilliant. He's one of the few singers that are so well versed in psychology, right. philosophy, you know, architecture, everything. He's theology, a, yeah. I think too. He studied, you know, theology yeah. and yeah, very interesting guy. Sammy, yeah. you know, one of the things I love about you is that you are, you know, even though your group has been for, for a, a few of your records, uh, Latin oriented. But you are a guy that has obviously, from your discography and, and from the pictures we're seeing, are a person that has played with people of so many different genres and styles. And you're, a, you know, a great percussionist and uh, such a musical guy. Uh, you know, how did you get into that whole thing of, of being sort of a, an all-around, well-rounded percussionist? Well, I was a lonely guy. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I was a very lonely guy. I... Uh, I didn't have many friends, you know, and uh, nobody wanted to hang out with me when I was a young kid. Is you're making really that up. Truly, that doesn't. Uh, you're making yeah, that up, it, aren't you? It, it was horrible in those days, and plus, I used to get beat up a lot in school. You Is know? this really true? By bullies, yeah. It was really, and I used to run home, you know, crying to my mother because they would beat me up, you know, and, uh, and, and so that wasn't very good. And my mother had to change schools all the time to, <laughs> wow. you know and it was really horrible but uh but somehow my grandmother put me in a music school and uh and there i did i i worked out much better because right. yep. i met kids of the same liking and yeah. same taste right. and so they were more kinder to me than the rest <laughs> of the kids they used to they used to want to beat me up while i was going home right but you but you ended up listening to just all sorts of styles and that's yes yes so I, for I, you it was never a one track thing you well know. when you're a lonely kid you know the, what happens is is that you go into a bubble right yeah. but Sammy you know you're making me want to come out here and hug you <laughs> <laughs> but I can't because of COVID <laughs> <laughs> well you know I I I created this world in my room right in my bedroom mm. I had a little turntable and a couple of records and then I started buying a lot of records every week and I used to listen to them at the time, I was listening to Claire Fisher in the orchestra mm -hmm. and people okay. like that. And so it was a little bit too sophisticated to other kids who were listening to the Beatles. Right. I was listening to Miles, you know. So they thought, they thought that music was, was horrible. Uh, they couldn't register all that harmonic oh, aspect sure, and that yeah. dissonance. was. And, and I, I always say that listening is, is an education. You have to really educate your ear to understand what uh, artists are doing. And so I sort of educated myself in listening. I was a great listener, mm. and, and I bought records from Brazil, I bought records from Africa, uh, from, from Middle East, Turkish music, and all that stuff, and, and sort of I trained myself unconsciously, you know, it was just something that I truly loved, rhythms, and I, I used to listen to tabla players from India, yeah. Al Araka, Zaki Hussein, all that, and, uh, and that kept me alive, it kept me mm. going, it, it kept me from not getting depressed, because the music really was a true thing that saved my life it's a healer yeah for that's sure the healer. that's fantastic a couple more pictures here and and then we'll let you play for us some more yes oh my lord where was this uh 
Oh, that's Gonzalo. Yeah. Yep. Oh, and, and Goombi. And Goombi. Yeah, that was, uh, I can't remember, man. That doesn't matter. I need to take some Alzheimer's well, it, pills. It's, no. <laughs> it's, it's an excuse to get to this photo. You have been played many years with the legendary Sonny Sonny Rollins. Rollins. Yes, yes. He is. Uh, now, he's, to me, one of the last legends that's still alive. Mm. And uh, if he goes, that's it. Because it was Miles, Lester Young, all these guys, and the, uh, Cannonball, and all those guys. And Sonny is, he's still alive. And yeah. uh, I talked to him once at least a month. Oh, he's, wow. he's like my dad. He lives alone like a hermit. He has no TV, no nothing, no computers. He sold all his mu He gave his music away to the Schomburg Museum, mm. and he doesn't even have a mouthpiece in his house. Oh, wow. He doesn't have anything. He, no TV, nothing. He's he just, done. He's, he's yeah, he just studies yoga. He, okay. And he meditates, and he eats well, and he's 90 years old, and he's always joking and having fun. And nice. Yeah, right. And we talk about things that have nothing... In relation to music. <laughs> okay, well, you know, he, he certainly so, made his mark. Yeah, he, uh, he's he gotten the Medal of Honor, yeah. the Lifetime wow. Achievement Award. Yeah. I mean, he's done everything. He doesn't, sure. you know, every time I talk to him, he says, what, do you, what else do you want me to do? I go, well, <laughs> I said nothing. I just right. want you to be my, my dad, my right. best friend. Oh, there you go. And he's the most kindest human being in the world, and I'm, I'm blessed to have him in my life. No, I'm sure he enjoyed you as well. Uh, <laughs> Sammy, talk to us about the educational aspect. You do teach and do workshops and all that. Well, I, you know, it's funny you say that. I'm getting ready to do a workshop on, on, on Thursday. Uh, it's an hour and a half workshop that I'm doing. And uh, I don't do too many, honestly, because uh, it's just, uh, it's all about timing and, and stuff like that. And, and so I'm always busy doing something else. But yes, I do it once in a while. I do personal workshops or, or, or private lessons and things like that. Do you like it? I, sometimes. <laughs> I, I, I like it sometimes. You know, you've got to remember that a, a, lot of, a lot of kids that, that want to play percussion, you know, percussion is a very macho instrument, you know, chauvinistic <laughs> sort of in the old days, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of kids that, that come to me, some of them, are just there because they just want it for the moment because it's it's cool, you know, but not because uh, they want to do that as, you know, professionally and as a passion. Right. So th it's a dichotomy between those yeah. and the ones that really, really want to learn. Right. Right. Yeah. It's well, incredible. Yeah. I did. I, there was something I wanted to ask you. Now it it, it left me for a second, but it'll it it'll come back. Seems to be uh, contagious. <laughs> it does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my god. I think we should uh, maybe get ready to play another set, Sammy. What do you think about that? Absolutely. So maybe uh So you go do that. Get our okay. tip jar info again and Okay. All right, you go do that. I'm All right. I am going to go here. Okay. Okay, Wendy. There you go. So you go you go back to your position. I will. Uh, your position of honor and I can do that one more time. Get my talk about my, uh, my just uh here, you can use this. Uh, support our musicians if you can. We would so appreciate it. First $100 will be matched. Text the word tip jar to the number 44321. All of the music, no, all of the money will go to the musicians, which is the way it should be. So um, that would be great. Uh, what I also uh, can tell you is we've got a lot of cool, fun people that we're watching. Oh, you know what I did want? I know what I wanted to ask him. Uh, he's got his mic there, right? So, so it's okay. All right, I can ask him. Okay, I'm going to add this to the stream. Sammy, yes. I, I remembered what I wanted to ask you. Yeah. You're, are you still doing the radio show at WDNA? Yes, it's now uh, 15, 16 years. And what, what days are those? Tell us the days and the times that we can listen Every to. Every Monday at 11 a.m. on WDNA. Okay, so there you have it. So that's always a, a fun thing to be able to watch because you really play some great music. Actually, Thank I you. did listen today, I have to say. Oh, you did? <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, all right. So I wanted to see. Uh, okay. This is going to be good. All right. Let me do that. And. The camera. Yes. That's what I was. That's a good idea. And we're just about ready to get this show back on the road. Okay. 
We're almost back. We're almost back. <laughs> too, there's too many uh, balls in the air for just one, one person. Um, okay. And once again, want to recognize the amazing Martin Bejaroa. Bejarano, yeah. I'm, I, that was like a mixture of the names. Did you like that? Yeah. Bejaroa, yeah. that's the new name. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fusion. Honorary Italian. Hey, it's, it's a fusion. Hey. No, Martin Bejarano on the piano. Uh, give it up because you know, even if you're in your house, you know, he needs a little love. And uh, Carlo Daroa. <laughs> Carlo Daroa <laughs> on the bass note. Carlo. We're getting close to Ignacio Berro. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so Carlo De Rosa on the bass, and of course the amazing Sammy Figueroa on the percussion. And are we ready? We yes. are ready. All right, take it away. We're going to do a, a classic tune, Blue Bossa. Ready?
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to play a tune now written by Martin Bejerano. This is a really cool piece. What's the name of the song? Origin Story. Origin Story. Written by Martin Bejerano. This is a really beautiful piece.
Thank you so much. Thank you. We have one more tune. We're trying to figure out what we're going to do with Seven Steps. Yeah. yeah. We're going to do a composition by Victor Feldman. He wrote this for Miles Davis. I had the honor of being around Miles for a while. 
And that was a hell of an experience for me. <laughs> and uh, this is one of his classic tunes, Seven Steps to Heaven.
Thank you, everybody. Martin Bejerano, Carlos de Rosa. How about it for two people I really adore, and I'm so happy, Nikki and Wendy. And Rick Katz, I love you. I love you all. Thank you for coming. Stay safe, everyone. The, um, the amazing, the amazing Sammy Figueroa with Martin Bejerano and Carlo de Rosa live from the Jazz Port. Thank goodness it all worked out. Uh, we were sweating bullets back here. <laughs> but woo, woo, woo. Anyway, what a, what a great night of music and, and, and information. I mean, how exciting is it to hear from the source all the things you wanted to know about Sammy? Although uh, we, got, uh, we got something from South Florida Jazz uh, talking about a story we're supposed to ask, but uh, then oh, we we'll better not. Oh, we'll just have to have him on again. There you go. There That's you go. a good thing. So... Uh, once again, you've, you've uh, wasted the first March, Monday of March, you know, listening. Well, you didn't waste it because it was <laughs> great music. And, uh, but here we are. Uh, next week, we have another live show from the Jazzport, which is really exciting. And uh, we hope you all will tune in. Uh, I don't know why that's happening. But uh, <laughs> we hope you all will tune in because we've got a really, really, really great uh, show for you. Uh, it's... it's uh, can we do that first or sure. is, that, is that, will I throw it out of whack? No, 
Uh, we can do this. Let's do this. Yes. Let's do this first. We're going to thank our partners in crime because without them, we would not be able to have been doing this for a whole year. So uh, please uh, go check out their websites. Please support them as much as, as you can. Uh, Gold Coast Jazz Society at, at uh, goldcoastjazz.org. Uh, the Sunshine Jazz Organization at sunshinejazz.org. The Miami Jazz Co-op at miamijazz.org, and last but not least, South Florida Jazz, which uh, I wanted to say a special thing about that because they have been putting on this really amazing virtual concert series. Uh, and the third one of the series is coming up and it will be March 27th at 8 p.m. And it's all virtual. And to find out about it, you've got to uh, go to southfloridajazz.org. But I uh, want to tell you a little bit, uh, so, the on on um on january no on march 20th at 8 p.m we're going to feature the astonishing pianistic and technological talent of dan tepfer that's march 27th just to be clear okay this is says okay so that was right uh, march 27th dan tepfer he's an amazing pianist and he's got a show coming up called bach to the future it'll play on words right there and uh, for all tickets and information to this live stream concert, you're going to go to southfloridajazz.org, and that's March 27th at 8 p.m. And uh, they have one more show after that, and you can find out all about that. That will be on eight in April, um, and that will be featuring the David Kikoski Quartet featuring Eric Alexander, and that should be amazing as well. But this uh, March is going to be March 27th. I'm going to keep... Put, putting that down, Dan Tepfer, solo piano, buck to the future. So you want to definitely go and check that out. As for us, uh, next Monday night, we're really excited to go live uh, again with the amazing Federico Britos. Because we and, didn't suffer enough. Yeah, we've got more <laughs> suffering to do. And George Garcia. Work out the kids. Uh, we're gonna, maybe we'll work it. Yeah, maybe it'll only get better. So uh, definitely tune in for that because that's we're really excited to actually anytime we can really be live 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 it's exciting and uh, we've got after that March fifteenth nope you've missed one you missed a whole week mm -hmm. uh, we're really excited to present Tal Cohen and uh, we haven't really talked about like he's going to be playing live but it's not going to be here it's not going to be I live at the so. jazz port okay so he'll be live from it's probably his house or we'll we'll figure all that out but uh, Tal Cohen is an, another amazing pianist we are just so fortunate in South Florida to have such amazing talent. Um, March 22nd, we're going to have a really amazing uh, uh, tribute to Polly Cohen, who recently passed. He's a legendary trumpeter and band leader. So we're going to hear um, all about, you know, his contribution to the jazz world. And um, it, it should be a really interesting night. And we're going to close March off with one of my favorite singers and people, Michelle Amato, who I grew up listening to. Um, in the South Florida scene, and you grew up playing with her because I've you known went her since 1975. Elementary school. Yeah. So it's kind of like it's like a more legend Miami legend. And so. the location. Oh yes. Show. So we'll be in. We're gonna go to um, Pilar's Loft. Pilar's Loft in Winter Garden. They have a special upstairs room where that we're gonna set up in, and and we're gonna feature Per Danielson, who's a, a really beautiful pianist and Michelle Amato. So we're really excited about, we've got a great lineup coming um, in March and we hope you tune in and we hope you have a fantastic evening. Stay safe out there because look, if I, it, it just feels like it's, it's, it's coming, you know, with all these vaccinations and, and more and more stuff coming and the Johnson and Johnson Things vaccine, you know, fit, we're, we're, I think we're going to be able to move forward soon. So uh, let's, 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 you know, buckle down and, and, and finish this thing off. So have a great night. Thanks for Thank joining you so us. much. Good, Good night. night.